Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Greetings and welcome to this Anglican Holy Communion service. For the 21st Sunday after Trinity. My name is Reverend Father Dr. Brian Mason, and I'm taking this service in our headquarters here at Whitton, Scotland. And my parish is in Ravuma Diocese, St. Augustine's, uh, Songia, in Tanzania, of which I'm determined to, to go back there for a, a visit at, uh, just before Easter, and then on to Malawi to start the Bible College after obtaining a work permit. So let's now get on with the service. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And the collect. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word that the hearts of kings are in thy rule and governance, and that thou dost dispose and turn them as it seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. We humbly beseech thee to dispose and govern the heart of Elizabeth, thy servant, our queen, and governor, that in all her thoughts, words, and works she may ever seek thy honour and glory and study to preserve thy people committed to her charge in wealth, peace, godliness. Grant this, O merciful Father, for thy dear Son's sake, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Correct for the 21st, Sunday after Trinity. See, got it somewhere. Let's see, we've gone and, oh dear, we've gone and lost it. Ah, here it is. Uh, grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that they be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 6 and verses 10 to 20. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God, 
that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armour of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all prevence and supplication for all saints and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Here ends the epistle. The Holy Gospel is taken from that of St. John, chapter 4, verse 46 to the end. There was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum, and he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee. He went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was on the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Come down, ere my son die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way, and as he now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that same hour the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. And this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he came out of Judea into Galilee. Here ends the Holy Gospel. And I'm going now to, to speak on the Holy Gospel, the sermon for today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This man 
says he was a noble man. Doesn't matter whether he was a noble man or whether he was a poor, poor man. His need was that his son was sick and we're told it was a fever and that his son was expected to die. And this man heard that Jesus was in town. Jesus had come out of Galilee. Oh, no, he'd come into Galilee, out of Judea. So, what did the nobleman hear? That Jesus was going from place to place, healing the sick and casting out devils. So this man was desperate. He knew his son was dying and that the physicians could do nothing for him. So he left his home and went out looking for Jesus and he found him. And what did he do? He went to Jesus and besought him to come down to his house because his son was at the point of death. And I have been at the point of death on many, many occasions. The last time I was in hospital, not all that long ago, Three times the doctors had made contact with like those, those who have power of attorney and saying that I was about to die. One doctor even to say it about putting me in the hospice. But I wasn't put in the hospice. I remain in the hospital and remarkably to astounded. The doctors, by recovering, and here I am, sat down speaking on the word of God to you. And this dear, dear, Nobleman, Jesus said to him about him going home that his son was healed. He could have said, oh, I don't believe this. But he did go home. And when he was nearly home, there was his servants coming out to meet him and saying, your son is healed. And when the nobleman inquired, when his son started to, to be better, he was told yesterday at the seventh hour, and the nobleman knew that that was the hour that Jesus had said his son was healed. So, he not only rejoiced at this, he believed that it was Jesus who healed his son. Not only did he believe, the whole household, his family, and the servants believed too. Now, what has this got to say to us? Quite simply, it showed that Jesus 
healed when there was a great need. And Jesus still heals. And because I have defied death on not just three occasions, but throughout life there have been other occasions that I have defied death. And what do you make of that one? And I have the authority that because I've been born again, because I have been crucified with the Lord Jesus Christ, he was crucified on Calvary's cross. He died as our high priest. And that when I gave him my whole life, I became as him and able to act as him. Do you need is your need as great as the dear nobleman? Doesn't matter whether you're man or woman. Or what, who you are or what you are in life. If you're in need of healing, Do you believe that if you repent of your sin and give your whole life to the Lord Jesus Christ and be prepared to be crucified with him and that from that point your whole life will be given to help others in their need. Even to believe that when you say, that someone who needs healing, someone may be on the point of death like this young man was. And if you're afraid if you're on the point of death, then by all means, at the end of this service, it will say how to contact me. Get in touch with me. Or if you prefer, come early November on Friday evenings. We will be doing service of healing where ones can make contact with us. You can make contact before then if you want. And I will pray or pray in the evening meeting service. Don't be afraid whether you live here in Whitton or whether you live in my parish of St. Augustine's in, in Tanzania or whether you live on the compound in Malawi of which I will be looking to visit on Holy Week to join in the procession of palms with the dear people there. It doesn't matter when or where. This ministry will go on, not just on a odd Friday, but go on 
Oh, each Friday, or when we're in Africa, perhaps we'll not be able to do it then, but we'll keep do it as, on Fridays as much as possible. From the first Friday in November. Now let us continue with our service. Let's see where I got to. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. As found in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon the earth, where the rust and moth doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither rust nor moth doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6. Whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, even so do unto them. For this is the law and the prophets. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Matthew chapter 7. Zacchaeus stood forth and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have done anything wrong to any man, I restore fourfold. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 19. Who go for warfare at any time of his own cost? Who plant a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Who feedeth a flock, and eateth not of the milk of the flock. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, it is a great matter if we should reap your worldly things. 1 Corinthians 9. Do ye not know that they who minister about holy things live of the sacrifice, and they who wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so hath the Lord also ordained that they who preach the gospel should live of the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 He that serve little shall reap little, and he that soweth plenteously shall reap plenteously. Let every man do according as he is disposed in his heart, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 Let him that is taught in the word Minister unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Galatians chapter 6 While we have time, let us do good unto all men, and especially unto them that are of the household of faith. Galatians chapter 6. Godliness is great riches. If a man be content with that he hath, 
for we brought nothing into the world, neither may we carry anything out. 1 Timothy chapter 6 Charge them who are rich in this world, that they be ready to give, and glad to distribute, laying in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may attain eternal life. 1 Timothy chapter 6 God is not unrighteous, that he will forget your works, and labour that proceedeth of love, which love ye have showed for his name's sake, who have ministered unto the saints, and yet do minister. Hebrews chapter 6. To do good and to distribute, forget not. For with such sacrifices God is pleased. Hebrews chapter 13. Whoso hath this world's good, and see if his brother hath need, and shutteth up his compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? 1 John chapter 3 Blessed is the man that provideth for the sick and needy. The Lord shall deliver him in the time of trouble. Psalm 41 Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, <coughs> unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name, may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to thy, the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly minister ho thy holy sacraments, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and your reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow and sickness or any other adversity. And I remember especially 
Leslie Barnard, uh, my dear friend in Derbyshire, who's not very well at this time. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give grace so to follow their good examples, and that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom, remembering those who have recently died here in Whitorn and its uh, neighbouring uh, areas. This we ask for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Dearly beloved, on next Sunday, I look to uh, do Holy Communion again. And this coming Thursday, possibly around 11 o'clock British time, I shall be doing service for St. Simon and St. Jude. Uh, let's continue. Dearly beloved in the Lord, ye that mind to come to the Holy Communion of the body and blood of our Saviour Christ, must consider how St. Paul exhort of all persons diligently to try and examine themselves before they presume to eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For as the benefit is great, if we were true and penitent heart and lively faith, we receive that holy sacrament, for then we spiritually eat of the flesh of Christ and drink his blood. Then we dwell in Christ and Christ in us. We are one with Christ and Christ with us, who is the danger great if we receive the same unworthily, for then we are guilty of the body and blood of Christ our Saviour. We eat and drink our own damnation, not considering the Lord's body. We kindle God's wrath against us, we provoke him to plague us with divers diseases and sundry kinds of death. Judge therefore yourselves, then, that ye be not judged of the Lord. Repent you truly for your sins past, and have a lively and steadfast faith in Christ, our Saviour. Amend your lives and be in perfect charity with all men. So shall ye be meet partakers of these holy mysteries. And above all things, ye must give most humble and hearty thanks to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost for the redemption of the world by the death and passion of our Saviour Christ, both God and man, who did humble himself even to the death upon the cross for us miserable sinners, who lay in darkness and the shadow of death, that he might make us the children of God and exalt us to everlasting life and to the end that we should always remember the exceeding great love of our Master and Saviour Jesus Christ, thus dying for us, and the innumerable benefits which by 
his precious blood, shedding he have obtained to us, and have instituted and ordained holy mysteries as pledges of his love, for a continual remembrance of his death, to our great and endless comfort. To him, therefore, with the Father and the Holy Ghost, let us give, as we are most bounden, continual thanks, submitting ourselves wholly to his holy will and pleasure, and studying to serve in true holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit upon the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us continue. Let us pray. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to leave, lead a, a new life following the commandments of God and walking henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter Serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his, his great mercy have promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all them that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all the travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If any man sin, he have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to thee, O Lord, Holy Father, everlasting God. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. Be not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these, thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance once of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you'd like to take your emblems of the bread and eat, take them and eat them in remembrance that Jesus died for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And there we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies, a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee, any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden uh, and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Now, it very much has been centering on the remission of sins, and that is usually as far as uh, the Anglican Church and the other denominations will go. But that's not the end of things by any means. Because Jesus not only died for the remission of our sins when we repent of them, and if you've not repented of them, this is your opportunity to repent of them. But he died, yes. But what does the creed say that I, I did? He rose again on the third day. He rose again. He rose from the dead. And why did he ra ra come from the dead? He became the firstborn of the dead. That we who are in him. And the important thing here is being in him, being not just in him, but being as him in this world. And that's why from November we will be able to have this service of healing, because we will be as him, and speaking as him, seeing as him, walking in this world as him. Let the church, the so-called church, waken up and act as Jesus Christ in this world. When Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he meant that to take place. And it has to take place even in the dark places of this world. Afghanistan, Pakistan, Somalia, Eritrea, the Middle East, of Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and the other states there. He meant it to take place, and it will take place. I say, speaking of Christ, that it will. Every creature will be reached 
and then the end shall come. And we are very much heading that way. The end times. And before the end comes, what will, will happen? A mighty move of God's Holy Spirit. God as Father, Son and Holy Ghost, the Trinity. Sweeping through the whole world. Bringing mighty conviction of sin, repentance of sin. And coming into this which is not being taught. A very rarely being taught. That just as he rose from the dead, we have risen from the dead already. And because we can act as him, we've gone into death and we come into resurrection life and we're now acting as him if we're in him. Are you in him? If you're not, ask, then give your whole life to him and you will be in him. Your life will be transformed just as mine has and those who are here with us in this work, this mighty work of God which is going to grow and grow and grow and sweep through the whole world, bringing about this mighty move of God's Spirit. Heavenly Father, thank Thee for this service and as ones come and repent of their sins and not only repent of their sins come to resurrection life and to receive the life of the Lord Jesus and to be able to be one with him and to act as him in this world may there be many as a result of this service, who will also, having given their whole life to Jesus, to do exactly what he calls them then to do, if he calls them into his service, may they seek and know where that service is to be. This is asked and it is done through thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I shall be back on Thursday morning at probably around 11 o'clock British time for a service for St. Simon and St. Jude. And then back next Sunday afternoon with the Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper, or the Mass, whichever you want to call it. It's all the same. Uh, so thank you for being with me. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, be with you if you have given your life to the Lord Jesus. Or have you not that now's your opportunity. Say, I'm sorry, Jesus, for my sins. I repent of my sins, but now come into my life, Lord Jesus. I give my heart to thee. Yes, give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. You will never regret it but give your life entirely to him and be part of his mighty army which is marching in these days and with the glorious gospel of repentance, of forgiveness and being like the Lord Jesus Christ himself and not being afraid of pulling down the strongholds of Satan.
echo the spell can on the epistle that if you read the epistle or contact me if you don't understand it uh, and it then as an army not wimps but those who are not afraid of tackling the very devil himself who is defeated and because he's defeated this woke nonsense and that which is of communism will be utterly and completely destroyed yes so i say now i wave goodbye right goodbye